right then so um i'm gonna i'm gonna run through black widow um because it's because it's interesting there's, there's tons of stuff in this um and it uh would like mise-en-scene as a as a as an approach and we'll, we'll take mise-en-scene as the like the grand approach a acting and, and space i think are bound up in that um and and we can we can sort of pull out individual bits when we get to them um the it works best if you have a particular argument and pascal Lefebvre points this out as well it is a methodology of, of of breaking something down and getting getting use out of a text something to talk about something something to do a close analysis of um and it's um uh, it's a more it's a more visual close reading than a literary close reading might be um uh, or and it's it's a kind of it's a in an interesting way of approaching it and it helps if you've got an argument if you want, particularly want to pick something out um th this one um i'm not going to do that today i've I'll, i'm going to present to you the denotations and 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 point out some of the interesting things and and the ways that the, those combinations can be fit together to make certain connotations um but what i'd um what i'm particularly interested in I've, what i find particularly interesting in the black widow is is um ideas of of gender representation representation uh but but also in terms of um horror uh and and kind of the, the the general creepiness um so i'll point out some of those things when they come up as well but you're also allowed to draw your own conclusions so so the be the, the benefit of a decoupage is is that because we're just pulling out denotations, there, there can be lots of connotations from those things. And it depends what you're trying to argue in order to, to, to come to it. Um, it. It also helps if you've got, like, I need to say something about something else, um, because otherwise you it just goes off to become largely descriptive when you use it. So, so it's, 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 it pulls you away from just describing narrative elements or describing what's on the page and actually pushes you towards analyzing it and sort of like closing these things down and, and applying it to something. Um, uh, so I'm not I'm not going to do like an exhaustive decoupage of all twelve issues either. I'm going to pick out elements across it and like springboard from them. Um, and I think, yeah, what I'm basically talking about and like what the book basically talks about is the idea of of staging action for the audience, um, and the audience being the reader here. Um, and be because it's because we're looking at at entire pages. Um, sometimes you can go to the panel and sometimes you can go to the entire page um, and both of those things are uh, both of those things are acceptable uh, it's like I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna gatekeep how to do mise en scene um, other than just kind of suggest how to do it but what we're what we're looking at is is like the framing of the image and subsequently a, a sense of staging um, and uh, the idea that that framing there's a placement of the characters within the space um, there's decorative details of the spaces, um, and we can use that to identify things like location and place. Um, there's certain spaces will have certain functions, uh, like certain dramatic functions, which we can flag up. Um, and the the kind of dynamics of how how these things are depicted, uh, like the depth and the detail um, of 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 certain scenes, is what I'm going to talk about with in terms of signal strength. This page is a, is a good example of this loads of um we have loads of detail here um we have zero detail here because all the details focused upon the black widow um and i think so this has very high signal strength this has zero signal strength in terms of the background because it's blank um so uh we talk about the 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 the, the fading in and out of that uh, and then and we can also sort of talk about certain character details um and I think today I'll probably leave off an in-depth examination of like expression uh, or gesture, because that's that's like a whole second conversation in itself, and 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 we we do have quite a limited amount of time, so so I I, I won't go on for the whole for the whole like thing. I won't play out the whole book. Um, if you like, I'll just we'll just kind of like come in. Um, what what's really nice about this comic is that it has like a split register of realism, so it's got the the, the very soapy realism of um, the real world of our of the heroines, um, and then it has this very gothic world of Miss Webb. And what we're introduced to first is this very gothic world, um, and then the jumping between those two worlds makes some really 
uh, and and those those moments are really really deliberate. So we've got um, regular world, uh, and and the regular world is set up. The so this is the regular world it's set up after this incredibly gothic world. So we're invited in first of all to the gothic, um, and if 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 anyone says that this isn't gothic, uh, would yeah we're gonna have to fight because it's it's the most. <laughs> It's it's got candles, it's got spiders webs, it's and candles as well, big smoky stuff, and and she's got she's got like one like an awning above her throne. She's got a throne. <laughs> uh, it's you know it's it's, it's super gothic. Uh, and and for the three of you, I, I don't know if any of you are arachnophobic, um, <laughs> but um, the, there's some moments in this comic that I'm reliably told by arachnophobes are completely unreadable. Um, and the front page is one of them because she's covered in spiders. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Um, so the real world like sets itself up straight away as this, as this place is, it's a school. Um, uh, and we, we kind of, uh, it obviously tells us it's a school, uh, but, but then it goes, look, it's a science lab. Um, how is it a science lab? It's got it's got sort of these things on the table, and and experiments are happening, and desks, and and it immediately goes, it immediately pulls us into this very real domestic world, a world that's recognisable um, as 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 a as a place that that the reader might might notice. Uh, it's worth pointing out here, like like in terms of the context, Misty is a is a 1970s uh, girls comic, um, British girls comic, uh, which is deliberately uh, written um, to do horror stories uh, for, for, for girls, uh, horror and mystery and adventure kind of stuff. Um, if, you, if you want more detail about um, misty comics and gothic comics for girls, um, I highly recommend Julia Rand's work um, because she, she's the go-to person for, for all of that stuff. So the, what's, what's interesting about like, this in terms of its mise en scène, is, is that, that on the page we go in and out of um, go in and out of kind of uh, uh, close views, very close ups, wides, close up, close up, wide, uh, kind of different views of of action which focus upon um, details like hands. Um, Details like faces, uh, and then and then out to the, uh, the uh, like a broader view of, of what's happening. Um, each of the compositions in the in these cases are, are, are all about viewing and being viewed. Um, so in in panel two here, we have this position where where we're meant to be part of the class. Um, so we're looking from two or three desks back um, at what's happening at the front of the class. Um, and it cuts sort of like the closure gives us a sense of cutting between uh, in a way that that um the like a dominant visual form at the time the soap opera would have been doing um so we so we cut between these things um but there's also um adherence to a, a, a an idea of, of of fracture and differentiation in the drawing um that that we have the teacher who has glasses on here there I should have done this with my drawing pen, really. Um, it was a, who has glasses on there, just to remind us who this person is, because otherwise we'd have no idea who she is. She has her glasses here, um, in that very hmm, posture, which I which I do all the time, uh, where, especially when especially when teaching, because it's it's not the most awkward gesture ever. Um, and the uh, <laughs> but it, what it does is make us make us go, okay, that's the teacher. That's the teacher. It's not this woman in panel two, um, who's at the back of the head of this woman in panel two. Um, so that's the teacher. And then we can also say, I assume then that that's the teacher. Um, but then the action has changed places as well. So in, in panel one, two, three, four, five, in panel five, um, we're now um, 180 from, from the, the original panel. But um, this is not a camera shot. Um, this is a composition which stages the action. Uh, so the fact that we've moved position isn't as confusing as it is in television, uh, because uh, in TV or in film, we won't see the previous shot at the same time as we see the current shot that we're looking at. Um, so we can do 180s. We can break the line, if you like, from, from like TV and film practice, um, 
we we can break the 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 rule of 180. The, the we can break the line. We can go past that um, because uh, it doesn't matter. Because rather than thinking of these as shots, what we can do is we can think of all of these pages, uh, all so all of these panels, um, as individual stages, uh, as well as single contiguous spaces and the same location. That that will come might come clearer later on as well. Um, what also happens here is is that we get a, like an alteration in signal strength. So we've got we've established that it's the 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 school, um, and we can we can see that this is the classroom. So we don't necessarily need the classroom here, in in this area here. So so the signal strength goes away. But when they change location, we get more of a suggestion of where they are. And then we discover that they're not in the school at all. Um, it's it's an argument to say that that could be confusing, but the fact is is that we're not reading one panel at a time. So a mise-en-scene analysis can't just analyze one panel at a time and be surprised by the change of location. What it's actually doing is looking at each panel and then looking at the entire page. Um, and that's that's that is I think really important is to is to is to know that there's individual attention to detail within a single panel and then also know that that panel is situated within a topography of other panels um, and that we're drawing sense simultaneously from those things uh, I'm gonna skip forward to th three uh, page three and four we've got more mundane elements basically um, and we have uh, this this fading in and out of, of background detail, and and partly that fading in and out of background detail is 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 an is an artist thing, is a is a drawing thing. It's a, I don't want to have to draw the background again, um, but but also it's um it's a decision that's made to say actually what's important here is is that I want I want to focus upon her reaction here, upon her face, uh, upon the emotion that she's going through, uh, and so. It's fading out the background, um, so attenuating the, the, the background detail um, is a method of, of highlighting and bringing it closer into the comic. Um, we get a similar thing um, in the next panel where, where a lot of the detail has been, has been removed. Um, but in order to make sense that we're still looking at the same person in the same place, because we're only on page three of the comic, it might be a different woman. Um, we've already seen on page two that, this, that they're struggling to differentiate between these um, uh, between these dark haired white women um, who, who all look the same age. Uh, and like we, we need to we need to sort of like differentiate between that so that we can see that there's a difference between the characters. Um, here we want to emphasize that there is the same character and she is in the same space she's in her bedroom looking at a telescope but it might be confusing that the, the two things are happening so we'll bung in a bit of background and bring her back to a telescope almost as if almost as if she's going ah, off to one side and then back um only she's going off to one side to this audience and then back to this audience only this audience is the same audience um it also it also sets up a kind of nice um, a kind of perfunctory indications of space uh, and, and and setting uh, so so we get a sense of the domesticity of her life of the normalcy of her life as well the normality of it that the the and and it emphasizes the kind of intertextuality of it as as being so popperish um, which of course is 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 inevitably. Uh, led towards um, on on page four uh, a, a, a space of the Gothic again, and we haven't seen Mrs. Webb since the first um, since since the first page really. Um, so she's not she's not kind of attacked them in the school uh, or, or anything yet. She's just this this mysterious Gothic character that that's lingering from outside, and 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 who is she? And oh, she must be associated with this spider. So there's this spider, and there's Miss Webb, um, who's looking vampy as hell uh, in this last <laughs> panel, um, and uh, has got has got hair, which is unfortunately very similar to um, one of the one of the leads, um, whose whose name I whose name I've forgotten now, and I can't see because it's too small on my screen. It's not Sadie, it's the other one, and I can't remember. I've probably got it in my notes. 
um frida so frida thank you so say so frida and the spider the spider queen uh, the black widow they look they look very similar in this first comic so there's like in the following comic they, they start making the differences really clear uh, so they sort out sadie's hair uh, and then they sort out um black widow's hair <laughs> like this um so this is um uh this is again this kind of um this shift between realities uh one one of which has become i mean this is this is like a really abstracted image uh that like the the disembodied head on the page her hair is sp are spider legs um this, this like if if you haven't got yet that that this is the villain um you, you will now um it's uh it's so it, it is like this is the spider story um oh this is the spider story this is great i'll read this um and it's and it functions as this counterpoint to the domestic which we immediately get afterwards so so we're, we're immediately reminded that that this is the spider story what spider story this spider story um oh god uh, and and the connections are completely made uh, but what's important about this is that it, it that there's several things to be said about class and aspiration um, in this page. We're, we're, we're back at school. The teacher now has her hair sorted out. It's, it's longer and in a bun. Um, and she has glasses on all the time uh, so, so that we don't forget who she is. Uh, because now we have three dark haired white women in the same room, all with curly hair um, by the end of this page. And that, that could be really confusing. So we've given the Black Widow a hat. Uh, we've got her in a bun and her glasses and um, Frida's hair um, is much less kind of um, curly. Uh, so so, so we've, we've kind of separated those things out and that, that, that's important to know. And um, uh, John Myers po pointed this out to me. Uh, it's like that that's a really important differentiation artistic thing to do. Uh, it's like, yes, I don't, it makes complete sense to do that. Um, what's interesting about this, this in terms of class as well is that, that this the girls school they're at um and there's a seriously posh girls school it's got a fountain <laughs> and and cut hedges and everything like you know that's that's that means private gardening um and and it has like steps up to it so it's like it's not just any girls school it's a seriously posh girls school um which which we didn't get in the first issue uh, and now they've kind of slipped in here that that you know these girls are uh, it, it's like I suppose there's always the presumption that, it, that an all-girls school might be pretty posh uh, because it's 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 not co-ed. Um, but then you go, oh, bloody hell, no, that's really posh. It's got arches and turrets and all sorts of things. Um, <laughs> but it's okay because because Mrs. Webb is also um, pretty damn posh because she drives a Rolls, um, and that that's important to note as well. So, so um, a random woman walking about in a cartwheel hat in a girls' school isn't actually out of place because she drives a Rolls. Um, <laughs> that's the, 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 these are things which um, are given to us as as kind of clues for um, class, uh, yeah, class, gender, the the, the roles that they're going to be fulfilling in society, uh, etc. The 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 attention of the students, so that um, so that we know they're probably well behaved in the class as well because because the teacher certainly doesn't seem very stressed uh so so we know that it's not like a grange hill type school um it's a it's a much more sedate type school grange, grange hill um for those of you who, are, who didn't grow up in the 80s and 70s in, in britain um is a it was a it's a tv program about a, a, a london school um and they're quite riotous and fun um the uh yeah and i'm sorry so the, the, the yeah and it, and it sort of goes on with this, this domestic life and we get we get more we get more plot um and miss webb looks mrs webb looks looks all right in this uh she she hasn't gone evil yet uh and we get that we get we get more narrative about the the way that the the the, the two women interact with each other and how they how they feel about each other um and the the kind of eh, frenemies uh sort of sort of stuff um and we we so it, that kind of reinforces the um that reinforces the situation that they're in and their their lifestyle and it's aspirational for the readers as well oh it'd be lovely to go to a girls school like that and have have a lovely posh teacher etc uh, and 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 we we get a sense of that because we now need to contrast that with um 
the reveal of Mrs. Webb's house, um, which, if anything, says serial killer, Mrs. Webb's house does. Uh, and it's uh, what's interesting about Mrs. Webb's house as well, though, is that it changes. Um, it's not. It's it's it doesn't stay like this. It alters between comics. And, there's a, and I think there's a reading that you can make of that. Um, but what's kind of cool about this page is that you've the, the detail that we're meant to focus on is the house and the young women are attenuated in detail because they're silhouetted. Uh, a, a methodology that's used um, twice on this page, um, once on the previous page. Um, and that pulling in and out of, of, of attention um, alters our focus. I won't say the pulling in and out of focus because that's a very cinematic thing to say. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, the attention on the page. So we are pulled out of the, out of looking at the the young women and made to look at the things that they're looking at. Um, similarly, the background attenuates um, in this panel um, after having been established in this panel, so, so that we know where we are, um, and it's attenuated in this panel as well. So there's this this oscillation between focus that look at the house, look at them at the house look at them look at the house again uh, and and it and it it's deliberately shifting in order to build uh, in order to build tension because then then they get then get caught in these webs um and the like it, like that's kind of inevitable uh, but this dynamic between the the signal strengths of the backgrounds allows that to happen because we we it doesn't show us all of the details at once we see the big web and then suddenly the traps in the big web um and it kind of gives an inevitability but if if the background and the foreground are um and the focus of what we're looking at changes and has a dynamic then anything can happen in the closure between the panels it becomes a very dangerous space um then and the next, the, the, the cover pages in this comic are brill. Um, on the next one, this uh, is is one of the moments that you lose all arachnophobes. Um, uh, and they won't and they won't read on. This this is a this is the them trapped in the web, and the web is particularly goopy and strange uh, and gelatinous, and it um, it immediately kind of loses this once they're freed. Uh, it becomes very stringy and and kind of cordy instead. Um, so that 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 that's quite a that's quite a um, an imaginative shift, uh, a shift in our imaginations as well. That that visually we're meant to read this as disgusting, and and gloopy and grippy and whatever kind of uh, whatever kind of Freudian psychoanalytic stuff you want to throw <laughs> on that as well, because it's just blur. Uh, and then and then it be, then it loses that as the reality of what is happening becomes a bit clearer um, as the it shifts that kind of peril into action into into danger because it loses that the gloopiness so we're no longer meant to be um, feeling abject disgust and fear uh, what we're meant to be feeling of instead is is like is terror it's just it like sh shifts that oh god action is happening it's happening to them right now um, the it kind of um yeah that, that and that shift that shift pushes the action through and 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 into uh, mrs webb's house whose who's mrs webb is now com, com, gone complete complete spider on her hair uh, this, this is how she wears it all the time now and no hat can contain it uh, and that that carries on through through the comics her, her, her hair has a kind of medusa like writhing quality um whereas frida's hair has has calmed down um considerably and no 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 now no longer looks quite so um as as curly as it did so that when we get them both in the same panel uh, we we can distinguish between them um the uh, that those panels of course being constantly loaded with as much gothic detail as possible uh and and she's got this kind of weird is it is it a villain layer thing she has seems to have some kind of spider themed computer console um which is which is full on that's full on villain 
uh, and there, there's no way of hiding that. Although the, the, the girls seem to, uh, to to not get that, um, the, the women are story are uh, just uh, become immediately oblivious to the fact that this woman lives in a dilapidated house that's also a, a high tech villain lair. Um, with, with a with with a vivarium and a spider theme, uh, and a very uh, very conventional map, uh, just just like stapled onto the wall. Um, what's what's odd about this issue is that it has this kind of mundane supervillain thing on the go. So and and Mrs. Webb has this all the way through the comics that that she'll have she'll have a spider themed computer console and then in the next panel we'll have something that's very 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 familiar and uh, Im immediately has verisimilitude for a different for an entirely different type of story it's like she just has a map of great britain on the wall um obviously <laughs> because um because she needs to, to plan to plot with os she can't just um she can't just like call it up on her on her computer on her spider computer um And I think the um, uh, like these discrepancies in 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 difference become um, di like deliberate artistic forms, and partly that's because this is this is um, a weekly a weekly monthly comic. Um, so the artists, these characters are not sure who they are at first, and then they get more into it, and they and they 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 know that they know their jobs basically, they know what they need to do, um, but also because when they I'll come back to this one when they leave the house um, it's no longer it's no longer boarded up or dilapidated um, so this is two issues on and suddenly the house is no no longer dilapidated so chronologically within the story it's minutes um, but within comics it's, it's two issues on the house isn't boarded up but actually what's going on in the story is that um, is that uh, Sadie's been hypnotized, and there's this there's this nice little scene uh, on the front front cover of this one where um, the spider that she's had placed on her is constantly framed within the frame of the panel, um, and that's that's a that's an instance of, if you if you like of, of, we could talk about the locus of terror of this that is that um, this is the bit that we must focus on the horror. Um, and then outside it, other things can happen, and indeed we get we get kind of um, a, a hypertactic detail about the, the the kind of the the the, type, the card here that, that that tells us what's happened, um, and and we get the dialogue, and we get a thought bubble. So there's loads and loads of different layers of 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 thought and occurrence happening within the panel, and at the same time, the focus should be absolutely upon this spider that sat on the arm. Um, the, the interesting thing is, though, because it introduces this idea of the of the hidden, the gothic uh, becomes a very illusory thing. That Mrs. Webb might not be all supervillain, and she's been suggested to be in previous comics, but actually quite mundane. Um, the fact that her house is no longer boarded up um, actually might push you towards thinking that this is. Um, that this is Frida's viewpoint that she can no longer say these things because she is because she's hypnotized. I think that that gives uh, like these issues onwards a really interesting, uh, really interesting angle if things do not match across. Of course, you could argue that well, this, these are things are released a long time apart. You've got to wait for the comic. The comic arrives. You read the comic. Fantastic. Uh, and you're not necessarily going to remember the previous issue. Um, but that actually, that's actually quite an old television way of thinking about issues and about episodes. Um, comics is very different. Comics we tend to collect. We don't tend to let go. Um, this, these comics are from um, the, the Bournemouth archive that, that Julia Round is working with. Um, uh, I suspect I sp suspect this might even be from Julia's own collection, um, or or from um, or, or she will certainly have this run of, of, of Misty's in her collection. And I know that people um, collect these comics and will reread them as, as issues as they grow. Um, so the idea of binging comics is absolutely not new. Um, 
is is something that we do all the time. So so you you would be able to hold issue four and issue two up next to each other and go look at the differences. Isn't it spooky? And I think that's that's something to, to kind of acknowledge that happens in comics reading that that that, that we do that. Um, as, especially as the theme of hypnotism has been has been thrown in. Um, it's a page. Yeah, yeah look, uh, she's upgraded her map. Sorry, on page 16. <laughs> just to point out, she realised that it wasn't keeping, so it's given it a nice spider frame. <laughs> um, which, um, which I'm assuming is it's a separate room now, uh, and and not laziness on the part of the of the actor, of the part of the um, a part of the uh, the artist. Um, of of course, what what we what we we could also that earlier on they hadn't realized that, that in the drawing of it that they could that they could make it into like a spider map um we could ignore that uh in, in our in our decoupage I, I think that would be unfair though i think we can say actually what's really interesting is that it tells us something about the context of preparing and making comics um and the idea of, of making the staging of the comic more interesting is if we could incorporate um her world domination or britain domination idea into into the design of her layer um because that that's exactly what it needs it needs it needs a gigantic spider themed map um and and why wouldn't it um it's also the the point as well in sadie's narrative where design elements of mrs webb's house and mrs webb's layer start creeping into sadie's house and so here's sadie with her mother in panel one, two, three, four, five, panel five on the second row down. And and the wallpaper has taken on the kind of um, webby, crackly effect that Mrs. Webb's house has. And Mrs. Webb's house has had this since the first issue. Um, and now it's creeping into um, Sadie's house, uh, which gives us an indication that, that, that's, that Sadie's life is becoming unhinged. She's also wearing a lot more um, web themed jewelry uh, and is wearing black uh, uh, as well to, to, to reinforce this idea that, that she's losing her mind and becoming um, evil like Mrs. Webb wants her to. Um, again, great, great opening page. That's, that's not the page. I, I'm quite interested in, in, the, um, in the fact that every kind of figurative space that was shown. Um, were often returned to reality uh, to to show the contrast between these the, the, between these worlds, so that we have um, we have Miss, Mrs. Webb's layer, um, whose whose backgrounds are becoming more abstracted, more crazy. Um, that's that's not just a kind of that's not the attenuation of the signal strength of the background. That's the that's the the turning of it up to eleven. So that we go beyond the realism of the background, trying to represent the layer uh, at straight towards an abstracted detail in order to highlight the fact that she's mad, mad, I tell you, um, uh, and and not just mad, uh, but but also um, also capable of delivering a lecture um, using her using her projector uh, <laughs> in, in what appears to be a conference room, uh, which she also has in her dilapidated, not dilapidated, evil spider layer house. Um, the, it's it, like the whole the whole reality of the comic is rickety as yoga balls. Uh, we're, we're, we're just we're just thrown about the place in it, and it and it, and it becomes like trying to analyze it, try, trying to look at it, but becomes a matter of unpicking what is the function of this scene. What is the function of, of, of this particular panel juxtaposed with this panel? Uh, and and all the time we're pushed towards this this very heightened, very melodramatic um, horror of of Mrs. Webb is, is leading these young women astray. She's even given them uh, matching jewelry, uh, which which now labels them um, Tara, Tara and Tula um, because because, you know, Tara and Tula, which the spider puns. It's every part of her life. She's obsessed with them. I think this also also it reinforces. So go back to page eighteen. Also, it reinforces this idea of the topography of the page, that that we're not just looking at one panel, and then the next panel, 
and then the next panel and and pulling out all those details and ignoring the fact that there's previous panels and there's other panels on the page but the the the, the topography of the combination of these things is really really important um and that that sometimes in that topography we need we need a guide we we need someone to point us where we're going and the artist is very very handily or the editor probably afterwards has pasted on a, an arrow to say well let's go from this into this page um that's that's quite common in 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 comics of this period um it's quite common across comics altogether actually there and there's a great deal of anxiety about reading order um especially in, in um cognition uh, approaches to um comics this this uh this kind of shift let's let's look at that and then let's go into this is um it is it, is is interesting because it because it leads us through the comic because i think that there's probably a, a lack of confidence that that in this particular um that then this particular frame here in panel three that them being led them or leading themselves down this tunnel isn't necessarily going to lead to this panel it might lead to this panel and then to there and then to there um that's that's for a wider discussion but the combination of of panels this this oscillation between the mundane this this new military character with the fantastic moustache that we introduced to uh and uh mrs webb's briefing about her about him because he sees the target those, those that juxtaposition um becomes something important that that changes our location to somewhere completely new whilst at the same time setting up the the, the narrative you know, skip ahead a bit there's so much there's so much to talk about um but the 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 transition between page 25 and 26 is interesting is that that this is um this is mrs webb gloating um uh with she's she's doing her super villain thing in in what in what appears to be a tomb of spiders um we later like immediately discover that this is not quite a tomb but a gigantic vivarium that she has for spiders that's part of her lair and each time we kind of revisit her lair and we see another part of it um the the they go out of their way to 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 demonstrate just how gothic -y it is and and to really kind of solidify the the evil the evil woman thing um and it, it it's 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 interesting that sometimes it's a house sometimes it's dilapidated sometimes it's uh, black widow's lair there's absolutely nothing consistent about it um in, and that fits with the story uh and it's really arch and mutable and constantly shifting and really really theatrical um like it's a really performative space of 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 gothic of evil um and it's it's you'd, you'd be nuts if you didn't see that and, and you didn't want to comment on it uh, and and i think when when you're dealing with comics like this like missile sends actually a really good thing to go we we can we can deal with this oh does everyone can everyone still see me and the page yeah oh, okay sorry i just had a weird black screen thing that happened all right it's okay uh hmm don't know what's happening there. Everything's frozen at my end. I'm going to wait for a second. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a sec. I'll, I'll come back to it. So, yeah, okay. There's like, there's like two more bits that are uh, that I want to go into detail on and point out and it's just ah damn it okay um so <laughs> I think that the fact that it's not stable and that it's illusory um is is super interesting uh because it's 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 all we have to go on like all we have to go on is exactly what the artist wants to show us um so we tend to want to trust what the artist wants to show us um and what we we get unsettled by the comic because it shifts about because it changes because it it is gloopy in one one part it's straight in the other part it, it's it's all dry nylon um th there's a tendency in the comic to to explain what's happening uh but but then to abandon the explanation and and, and to go for like fully crazy again and you go oh what what's going on and so so we're like it's stable but it's not stable for long and part of the appeal of of the comic is that it does that and this is what brings you back to keep reading it um and and I think 
I, I, I think it's quite a readable comic. It, it drifts off a bit, and at about page thirty-five, it, it drifts off a bit. Um, but it's um, it it does it brings you back in, and there is a a, a constant um, a, a constant allure of wanting to find out more about Mrs. Webb's world and the world that they build for Mrs. Webb because it's not stable. Uh, and Mizzle says a really good way of unpicking that and, and pointing out those things um, with, with detail in order to sort of drive towards it. Um, and I think when I wait for my computer to, to kind of sort it out, like like what what can we use this this comic for to talk about? Uh, I think would be a, probably a, a thing we can discuss now. And what can we use Mizzle in within this comic to, to pick out? Did you have you noticed any patterns with it or any any themes apart from the ones I pointed out? I just think it's amusing that it is like impossible to kind of get a a sense of the space inside of the house. Like this house, like you cannot. It is not like any house you've ever been in, and like what size it must be. Like it is so hard to just like it just destroys that sort of sense you have when you think of a home because yeah. and and what is generally inside of a home and how that space is oriented and, and kind of how destabilizing that ends up being and almost frustrating in a way that you can't place it yes yeah i, th I think i think you're right it's um it's kind of labyrinthine without being without being the labyrinth so it's so it's it's it seems to have one key space which is her throne room um and mm -hmm. but it also has multiple other spaces and, and and other places and it's more than just looking at it from a different angle but it's deliberately it's deliberately multifaceted and non-contiguous so it's, so it's like you can't you can't get through it you can't explore it and i think that's 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 really interesting and it gives it like you you could you could do like a, a like a really simple kind of constructivist equation and go it's her mind um like that <laughs> she's 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 like sp spider mad and spider mad uh and and those two things are are like the same and, and represented by 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 her chambers uh if if you want um and i think that's 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 really interesting because because later on like you discover like why she's like she is and you kind of go oh okay there, there is some sympathy there for her um but but the yeah you can't piece the spaces together quite in the same way as you can the school because the school has a little bit more logic to it that the, the classroom's always represented in the same way the door's always in the same direction so the door's always on the right of the panel um and like so and the blackboard's at one end so it's quite a logic to the school there's a logic to her house as well so there's um there's bits where you can see through a doorway the staircase uh, so you know that her house goes up and there, there's the, her bedrooms upstairs presumably and it matches some kind of architecture that we would be familiar with but you're right mrs webb's house doesn't match any kind of that any of that kind of architecture it certainly doesn't look like it fits inside the house which we keep getting shown <laughs> Shall I give this another go? Okay, come on. Right, what page are we on? And we're on here. Cool. So, uh, like, this this is the, probably the first, but like, going on from from what you're saying. Um, th this is probably the first point where we get like a look at her house almost in its entirety or at least we get a look at the throne room and and realize oh look there's the map um there, there's the map there's the vivarium there's her throne even though those things were the other way around before there's some curtains which she clearly like charges through um and dramatically uh and, and, and uh, so, so the first point that we get a sense of, oh no, this is how the space works, is absolutely not how the space works at all, um, and it's not it's not consistent with any of the other comics. But again, on the same page, hypnotism. So, so at all times, it's just like this woman's just been turned in inside inside out around on herself. Um, 
and at uh, all points we get this this sense that that she's got no clue what's going on with her life um there's the house again looking more like a little alpine um cottage uh ready ready for for ski season um and i think um what we tend to have is uh and this this is kind of interesting this this scene here in terms of the positioning um yeah sorry yeah i'll talk about this that what we tend to have in in all of these comics is in this in this in the set pieces of stuff um ev everything is everything is shaped so that we can look at it even though even though there's there's encroachments into other panels and to, to show that the action's flowing across we're like read this panel first then read into this panel um the, the, there's there's a there's an element of of that kind of comic design of thinking about how, how we're going to look at this comic and that's quite a sophisticated way of doing it um this this scrap um is is taking place like a chorus line uh so if, so if you were to draw this as a as a bird's eye view from above um it it would be, I'll, I'll, I'll do it here. It, it it would be this person, this person, this oh, this person, this person, and one more person there. Um, and that that and so so and we're looking at it from here. That's that's such a chorus line thing to do. You that that's that's perfect. That's perfect staging for for an audience um to 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 look in on uh and so is this so it's the third panel and so it's the, uh, so it's the second panel so it's the third panel um that all of these things are presented to us uh, as audiences um even even the action um like that i can still see um a, a good third of her face um with to to, to know that 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 to be able to, to connect this character with this character with this character i know that these are the same people because they're facing the front all the time um it's it's almost to the point of um of kind of lecoq style mask work where you where you never turn your head at all um you always face the front uh and kind of like that that sort of staginess um of it is happening they've even grouped together um grouped together to be bystanders in the background to comment upon what is happening on the action in the foreground um and it's uh, it's like it's terribly convenient well thought out um uh, fight scrap that they're having uh but but it's actually it's actually it's staged for us uh jump onto page 35 yeah mrs webb's black widow plot goes goes kind of full scale she's got more detailed maps now as well so she's up in a game um the introduction of the wider world is interesting in this comic when when her plan starts you know being like let's go to london um we know we're in london uh we know we're in london for the very obvious reasons <laughs> we're in london look look how london it is despite having an american ambulance look how london it is um it's yeah just in case we didn't realize where we were um it it, it wants it to, wants to tell us where we are uh, all, all the time um mrs webb of course needs to travel incognito now so puts on her hat um uh so so that she can she can go on on a, on a crazy uh, car journey um but you know she's still despite talking to people in bowler hats because london's full of those um she she's uh she's managed to put on uh at least something resembling it's like it's a proper scooby doo moment she she's put on her uh she's put on her spider pen, pendant so that we don't don't think that she might be someone with a bowler hat um and and we know that it is her all the time so so that we know that she's still spider woman despite having a headscarf on is it incognito there's some i could we could briefly talk about um expression here that this 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 expression is incredible the, the the drawing of that that's such a shrill scream um that that's of of absolute horror that's happening 
I was just saying, I shall remember this, your turn will come. Um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of an unforgettable face as well. And, and, and a very readable expression of, of, of well, I don't know, actually, it's, it's, it's readable, but it's not necessarily understandable um, by, by itself. Um, and I think this is, this is one of the points that I tried to make in the book is that there aren't like Fagin says that there's, um, that there's like seven universal expressions. Um, and I say, no, there's not, uh, there's, there's lots of expressions and there's the context in which you see the expressions. Um, and actually the context in which you see this expression here makes this expression more memorable. And again, you have it on the topography of the page. So, um, she's properly crazed here, um, and, and is, is basically cursing somebody, but unless we had the context of, of the action of what's happening. Um, that expression is kind of readable. Well, well it's, it's, it's kind of multifaceted. It's fluid and it's semiotic. Mm -hmm. Like we need other things to, to pin it down. Um, and, and we build those things up with, with our own performances of, of, of how we're reading her, of how, of how we're expecting her to sort of deliver this material. And so, so when we see that face there, we, we understand it because we've seen the context before it because we, we know what is happening around it and what happens afterwards. Uh, also, it does, it during, yeah, hi. Sorry, yeah, no, I was uh, so struck by this image also and, and like the lighting of it. Um, yeah. The, the, the weird sort of stage lighting that's coming from nowhere all of a sudden. Um, yes. Casting these shadows on, on her face, I just found that so, um, again, one of those moments that sort of like bring us out of the, the reality of where she actually is in the world. Yes, it does, doesn't it? And it's it's um it's really nice. Uh, light, lighting's not something I, I managed to get onto talking about, but lighting's certainly something that's that is worth talking about because it's because it's all drawn that there is there obviously is no actual lighting source within within the the mise en scène to to talk about per se. But um, as you pointed out, it, it does seem to be lit, um, and it's got this very kind of um, this sort of very uh, acute angle sort of splashing across the face but it's coming from below and going upwards which is which is immediately a, a very arch very gothic lighting state to have because it's that it's the old footlight position um theatrical footlight position so, so that if you watch if you watch early horror films like silent movies um the, the kind of lighting that will happen with, with with villains and stuff will be the the old torch under the chin trick uh, that mm -hmm. that you might do on the campfire, um, and that's absolutely what's what's happening here. Is in order to add that sense of dun dun dun, she has cursed us, um, po possibly with even a, a a hideous laugh or a lightning strike happening in the background, um, and it absolutely does lead us to that to 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 push us into those things that 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 shadows kind of plunges up up her face. Um, you're, you're, yeah, you're right. It's an incredibly theatrical bit. Um, and, and, and again, it helps us to sort of read, to read the expression um, because that expression is horror, disgust, shouting, screaming, many, 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 many things. Um, but actually with the context and with, with the lighting, you, you, we certainly go, right, it's that, um, she, she's cursing. She's cursing us, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 will come for us, and we can probably believe her. Uh, and it is that it is that um, it is similar to that attenuation of detail or turning up to eleven and making go abstracted, um, so that so we get that heightened that heightened moment of gothic horror mm -hmm. or drama, um, only only ground just just on her face. It also reminded me of um, of the the famous final shot of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, where where Donald Sutherland points yes. at the, the screen and yeah, yeah. Thing, uh, this probably came out just a few years after that, maybe or around the same time. So I think I think this is the same time. This is want to say Invasion of the Body Snatchers remake was I don't know. Someone have to IMDb it for us. I think this is 76. That sounds remember. right for Body Snatchers too. Um, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It has that, that 
Hugh's moment mm -hmm. that, that Body Snatchers draws upon with that one, get that one. Yeah. Um, and that, 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 yeah. Whether or not young young women would have, would have seen that film, it's debatable. I don't I don't know whether whether the the um, they, it was 1978. 78. Okay. 78. Yeah, I just googled it for us. In that case, then, did the the body snatchers read this? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, who who knows? I'm not I'm not, not gonna not gonna say no. Nah, this is definitely what happened. But um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's certainly got that very, very familiar mm -hmm. horror thing. Um, this this is um this this kind of a common intertextual thing. The the whole concentric circles around the eyes for um for hypnotism. Uh, so her expression just by itself is just blank. Um, but with the hypnotism icons around here, so this kind of iconographic stuff that, that's been added, so we can we can bring a bit of forceville to to bear on it. Um, with with that, the combination of those two things, um, hypnotized, <laughs> got it. That's that's a that's a really clear thing of, of what's happening. Uh, and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Webb's house is dilapidated again, and seems to be sinking in on itself as well in this particular image. Um, what's um, it, it's also there's also a running theme visually within this, like textually, and I forgot to mention it this, this at the start. Is that Mrs. Mrs. Webb right at the beginning looks like Edward Fenwick from um, a bunch of um, uh, uh, Martino um, Jallos. Um, from the 70s, so she's like um, uh, the uh, colors of the night and um, that that type of that type of um, horror film uh, from 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 like Italian Jallo horror, and this looks like Lucio Fulci's house that he uses in like um, the Beyond and the house by the by the cemetery. It's got that kind of um, it's got that kind of a, a Italianate horror feel to it, and and kind of the gates are very art deco-y sort of italian-esque art deco um as well so it's so it has this european horror flavor at the same time and i, and I wonder if that's because the reference material the reference material and uh, that the artists we've had um for this type of work uh i think i think this is uh, like i would need an expert on mr comics to tell me for sure but i think this is probably drawn by spanish artists um like weekly um would have would have had that as their reference material um and if not even uh, like the the martino films were, were pretty famous and he came over to film in london all the way through the 70s so they would have had that kind of reference material as well but it looks it's got that kind of jallowy feel um and mrs webb at the start definitely looks like edward fenwick um The the spiders' webs lose their stickiness by this point, as as we're realizing that, that Mrs. Webb is is fully insane uh, and not not just not not just a, a, an evil villain, but like she's probably bonkers and all this mechanical and it's, and it's a massive plot. So um, some of the gothicness starts falling away, and we start seeing through it to what things actually are, like the spiders' mechanical, um, the the vivariums, kind of like a big glass thing we, we get much more kind of domestic spaces within her house um she's off on a rampage though um and she's going uh, about the country doing her, her her evil plans uh i'd just like to to jump the like the spiders get big and they get nasty mm -hmm. uh, and gigantic and they escape and they escape london and her plans coming to fruition um and we've, we've got the underground uh which which is great uh and and that's 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 really interesting to just to, to see other spaces within london being represented spaces of familiarity places that we would not want to see a gigantic spider in uh like like coming out of a train tunnel and the underground uh so it goes full-on nuts and the the action in this bit is is, is really great toward, towards the end of the comic um reminding us what, what the house looks like and you know here's here's the trashed here's the trashed house uh uh inside um 
more more scenes of London as the the spiders are gigantic and and the, the plan goes nuts. And I think I think I want to end this one on um on just like when it gets out of London, we know that it gets out of London and when it's in the wider world because what's outside London is pylons and sheep, uh, <laughs> and that's that's like the, that's that's not London. So we have London and not London. Not London is pylons and sheep, uh, and that's that's Britain. Um, and here we have Britain, and that's how we indicate that. Uh, I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff to to do with this comic, to 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 explore with this comic, and plenty of moments to kind of like dig into, like really, really, really thoroughly, um, and and exhaustively, or to to just pull back and just like this, let's just look at this one page and read this one page in this way.